Oh. Proper rock band. Best band since Thin Lizzy. The Darkness. Well, big words. Growing on me. XFM 104.9. A bit rash, I think. Uh, uh, R. Gervais, S. Merchant, K. Pilkington. With a little bit of a- I know you're- I know for a fact, uh, that Steve is getting a little bit sick of Carl's attitude. Oh, his attitude's appalling. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> I quite like it though, cause it's a straight away friction and he's sort of like, you know. To be fair, I genuinely don't think I'm the culprit in this. I think I come in and I just ask him a simple request. Yeah. And immediately on my back. Whinging, moaning, whining. I, I, I mean, I don't know if there's any evidence. Well, it's funny you say that actually, because, uh, support in the survey, yeah, it came up this, this week. It's, uh, quite extensive. Um, Mancunians take more sick, day sick days than anyone else. Mancunians take more sick days than workers in any other city in Britain and Ireland, according to Manchester-based employment firm. Survey, uh, by Peninsula found uh, employees in Manchester take 11 six, day six days per year, whereas closest rivals Edinburgh and Dublin, um, take an average of nine. Liverpool, Newcastle, Birmingham, Cardiff, only eight. Is Reading so, mentioned there or No, Bristol? it's not even in, it's not even in there. They don't sure. take days off. Um, London is only, only seven. So, so the point is, I mean, I don't think you can take anything from it, but if you're an employer and you had a Mancunian and a Liverpudlian and they were equal on everything else, but you really couldn't afford them to be away, Liverpudlian's gonna probably be away for eight days. Sure. Mm. The Manx gonna be away for eleven, phoning in sick and- So uh, what can you, I mean, just well, the, the analyzing is, the data there, how, what would you extrapolate from that? Um, I, I, I really don't know. I mean, call in if you've got any clues or email us in if you've got any. I don't know why they. I, I think maybe. I don't know. Man I mean, Union's just. I, mean, I don't really know many people from Manchester. Well, I only so. know one, but I know he was off sick because he put on wet trousers and he got a. He got a cold, I think. Yeah, well, he just said he was. Yeah. Didn't come in for. Yeah. Um, he left early as well once. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. I mean, that's the survey. I don't know. I mean, it's evidence because it's statistics, so. There yeah, you go. It's guaranteed on. evidence that that's so, actually proof. So, any, any thoughts on that, ricky.gervais, at xfm.co.uk? I mean, you're from, oddly enough, you're from Manchester, yeah, Carl. I am, yeah, 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 yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. on, on that? On what, sorry? No, no, on the survey. Oh, uh, wasn't really listening. Sure. Well, Man Mancunians take off more sick days, they call in sick. I mean, presumably spuriously. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's, they've got the same body, they're exactly. biologically the same, so... Uh, so uh, they're uh, making up, they're lying. Yeah, they're some, some of the days, maybe just the, the three extra they're making up. Yeah, they're moaning. Um, probably because we work a lot harder than the others, so we're tired, so you're sick, so you need time off. Probably. Well, probably. unlikely. I mean, the Scousers, to be honest, yeah, take them on, let them work in your office. <laughs> but, you know, how many computers are gonna go missing? Right, that... So offensive. Is offensive. Right. This is a, this is a, no, this is a survey that proved you just made that up. You just carried on the myth that Liverpudlians thieve. Mm. Now that that is just that's not true. That is not true. Well, well it's not. Well, some of them do. There's, there's been no survey that you're more likely to thieve if you're from Liverpool than if you're in Manchester. So that that hasn't been proven yet. So mm. all all I've got is the evidence from a survey of I think three and a half thousand people. Yeah. It's proof that people f Mancunians take off more sick days. It's FM 104.9. This is April Come She Will by Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel, April Come She Will. A lovely, lovely love song there. Uh, the X list was all about sort of like sexy songs because of uh, the death of uh, Barry White, of course. And uh, Carl and Steve have a little argument. Steve said, "Well, there are, there are such things as sexy songs, of course." Carl said, "I can't understand it. No. I understand it. How can something be sexy? How can you warm them with a song?" Steve went, "Well, you don't warm with it. You just put it on in the background." Carl said, "Stick the telly on." Stick the telly on. I love that. You don't <laughs> believe there's any such thing as a sexy song, is that right? I, I I don't think it can get you in the mood. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> You're, you're either in with a chance or you're not. I don't think it matters what, what song you put on. Well, I don't think it ups your chances. I don't think if no, it you does, take- it does, if, if you put Channel 5 on on a Friday night, right, see a little bit of that action, gets anyone going. <laughs> I well, just work for me and that's all what's I'm, that's what I'm when, saying. What's that, when pets go mad? No, what's no, that? you know, like, uh, I what? don't know the titles of them, I don't, I don't look at the titles, but- What, the show with Chris Moyles? <laughs> It's Do you mean the kind of erotic thrillers? Yeah, yeah, put, put one of them on, that's, that gets you going a bit. <laughs> what, what's, I might what's be she... tired and that, but- what, 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 what does the, what does the woman go, go, oh, that's an idea. <laughs> hey, that's but an they're, idea. They're normally, they're normally called something like illegal briefs. <laughs> <laughs> and they're normally about, you know, they're normally about some kind of, uh, female solicitor who's uh, defending a guy who may or may not be a, li uh, a killer, yeah. but maybe in a former life they were lovers. It's always some nonsense like that, and presumably there's normally some gruesome murders, so how is that getting you in the mood? It's plot development. 
<laughs> yeah, it's the narrative. Oh, <laughs> I love narrative. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that's a lovely twist. I've got the horn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So, uh, if you're from Manchester, sorry about that. I mean, it is true. We aren't, we aren't making that up. We weren't doing a, a stupid stereotype like Carl did with Living Puddlings. It's just a survey that I'm keen to just take off more sick days. I mean, but there might be genuine, there might be sort of an iller, iller people, or it might just be people who are in, in Manchester go, oh, I can't be bothered to go to work, it's rubbish. Whereas if you're in London, you go, I can't wait to go to work. What exactly. a lovely. What a lovely place this is. Some great jobs, don't you? Great jobs, don't you? Yeah. Um, uh, Rick, I know you're always looking, uh, just to keep you kept abreast of, you know, new developments in yeah. music, what's happening. Yeah. I don't know if you've got any plans this evening, but you might want to pop along to the Hope and Anchor in Islington. <laughs> Why? Where, uh, playing tonight, um, Restless Diesel. <laughs> Please uh, welcome to the stage. Restless Diesel. I mean, we've talked about it before, band names where you just have to imagine you're supporting U2, yeah. Wembley Stadium. It can never happen. Please welcome to the stage. And Restless he comes on and Diesel. After the first song, he goes, uh, thanks, because great band before us, Restless Diesel. You hear a lot <laughs> more of them. Exactly. Yeah, it so, won't uh, happen, will it? Sure, they're a great band. I think What's the tax them. on that? Fiverr in, is it? <laughs> 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 it's not, uh, not telling us actually, yeah, but yeah, to pop down with Open Anchor, maybe tell us uh, how Restless Diesel were tonight. Yeah, just, uh, call in. Maybe, uh, call in on, uh, Christian Show Monday. Just tell <laughs> us how Restless Diesel were. We can make that a regular feature. <laughs> Uh, now, what's coming up on today's show? Really? Well, we've listen, got... we've got all the usual favourites, we got, uh, and some new ones. We've got Monkey News, that's sorted, Carl told me. People are guaranteed Monkey he News. He called in, he said, I've got some Monkey News. Brilliant. He's done that, I had to make sure. Yeah, we got that. We've got, um, some great tunes. I've got a great song from Tupac, some Cat Stevens, some Jimmy Webb, some Thin Lizzy. Can I surprise you with something from Aerosmith? Brilliant. And a little treat from Evan Dandler. We're, we're quite rocky today, aren't we? Uh, there's, there's a threat that there won't be rockbusters. Good. Uh, <laughs> that's no threat. <laughs> but, um, we can Great bring news. back Educating Ricky. Oh. I mean, cos it's sort of like seasonal, isn't it, our show? We don't want all the, it's not like Ant and Dex takeaways on all through the year. Yeah. They go away for a few weeks and we get something else, like Ian Wright's, you know, yeah. friends like these or something. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, maybe Rockbusters, maybe not. Rockbusters um, on hiatus, but Educating Ricky always. That, that's what's going up. And, uh, I'll tell you what, Jane's Addiction, just because they oh, rock as well, don't oh, they? Oh, brilliant. XFM 104.9. Excellent, Ricky Jamaica. <laughs> Jane's Addiction, Just Because on XFM 104.9, broadcasting from London where people prefer to only be off sick when they actually are ill. Sure. Um. Yeah, I don't think I've ever taken a day off sick. Mm. Except when I had that terrible, terrible, terrible tonsillitis. Is that when you went home, stayed yeah. with your mum and dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that a problem? No, it's back to health. No, I'm not saying it's a problem. It's back to health. <laughs> yeah, I've got loving family. So sue me. Uh, what do you make of <laughs> 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 The antagonism and piss taking is just like, oh god, three blokes in a pub. Is there people listening? I can't yeah. Are there? <laughs> <laughs> um, Carl, what do you make of London? Because you, you you often say you, anyway, you'd much rather be up north. Well, he wouldn't, or he'd go. Well, this is what I, you know, he constantly says. You've chosen to live north. here, you've lived here for years, you've got a flat here. No. You know, no. I chose to come here because I, I was offered a job that was good money. Yeah. I wouldn't have come here if there was no job. So you prefer to be somewhere where there's a good like job, so here. you've chosen like to live here. here. I don't like being here, though. Well, no, but you can leave. I can, to what? Well, exactly! So you've chosen to stay somewhere that's better for you. It's not better for me. Well, it's making me ill, I'm not sleeping. Well, you say, you say you're ill, I think you call in here, but I don't think you are. But I mean- <laughs> Are there any stats to prove that? Well, yeah, cause it, sure. you know, it'd be el of the eleven days that he calls in sick, I reckon yeah. probably seven of them are genuine. Oh, I'd love it if I dropped down dead tonight. Honestly, I'd love it. <laughs> if you dropped down dead tonight, you'd yeah. love it. Why aren't you sleeping? What, well, you're feeling ill now, are you? I That's know, funny, know, you weren't feeling ill earlier, but you read that and you're suddenly ill. I'm run down. Well, you should take a holiday. Oh, oh yeah, you've just had about eight in the last <laughs> six months. <laughs> Why are you run down? Why are you run down? Yeah, what have you done? You sit in a, a little air conditioned office. I've got time to tell you. Let's move on. Let's <laughs> get on with stuff. What have we got anyway? Because we uh, we didn't have a chance to meet up this week. Me and Ricky could have done, but you said you were busy, Steve. Yeah, so was, that's probably was. why you don't get run down. But mm -hmm. finishing work at about four o'clock. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I, I could I could I could have had the meeting, but uh, we gave you a time, and you suddenly decided with very little notice that you couldn't make it. So we'll uh, make it meetings and that. Oh, oh. So yeah. what have we got? Then? What have we got? It's twenty past one. What have we got? We're on till three. Well, we've been talking. We've been doing well. We've been playing some great rock and roll. We've been playing some lovely songs. We've we've told them. We've explained a survey just for employees. Be careful. Yeah. We've you know put that out there. We put a shout out there. People know. I mean, would you say? Would you say it was 
it's probably safest if you are an employer to never employ Mancunians. Well, I wouldn't would that go that far. I wouldn't go that far fun? because you see, that's only an average. So I imagine some Mancunians, like you know, Londoners, uh, you know, a nice. Um, reliable people, it's probably just a, a few bad eggs that m uh, throw the stats up sure. a little bit. You know, people that would go, I'm not coming in today, I'll put on some wet trousers. Sure. All right, stay in bed. Yeah. Stay in bed. Yeah. You still got them on? <laughs> yeah. Well, pop them off, <laughs> yeah. put them on the radiator and go to bed with a little duvet. <laughs> That'd be the best thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all right, Carl? Mm. Why, what's your attitude? Is it because you're tired? Yeah. But why are you tired, though? You weren't saying that watching those Channel 5 films again, were you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, we were, me and Steve were having a little meeting yesterday over lunch about, you know, planning stuff for the show, and, uh, Gary Kemp came up to me, started having a little chat about old times, and, uh, I went, oh yeah, as he went away, Steve said, right, think of this, he said, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, remember that sentence, don't take this the wrong way, so there's a right way and a wrong way I could have taken this comment, he went, nodded to sort of Gary Kemp and went, he's aged better than you. I went, well, how could I take that the wrong way? Yeah, it's uh, not offensive. No. Well, the, the point is this. He, he does, because he didn't know me twenty years ago, so he's actually saying, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, he looks better than you do. Yeah, well, he does. But why say that, Carl? What? Did you really say that? Yeah, although, can I just get, just backtracking for a second, I love the fact you said you bumped into Gary Kemp and you reminisced about old times. What old times did you share with Gary Kemp? Well, no, Kemp? he came up and said, did we drop the pops together? And I went, no, I did razzmatazz. He said, oh, we did razzmatazz. I think he was thinking, had he ever met me before? But he, he, he hadn't, because we hadn't, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 And, uh. But if you had to make an objective <laughs> analysis, you I, know. I wouldn't, I think that's out of order. Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, you're always slagging me off, but apparently no, you, you no, can't no, do, well, you can't make a value judgment on something else. No. On, on oh, well, because you're, you know, you're morally all over the place. You don't know, you're, you know, you don't know where can't you're coming or going. Believe it. Yeah. Believe it. Sure. Yeah. Well, you should hear what I say about you, behind your mate. So, are you? Would you say you're better looking now than you were, or <laughs> than I'm what? W would you say you're better looking now than you were than I was when? Well, like, like you know, have you aged well? Yes. You've aged well. Yeah, I've kept my looks. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Bit of a bit Evan Dando, this would be lovely, yeah. Look for sunshine, see the burning full time. Radiohead, go to sleep. That's good, isn't it? On XFM 104.9. <laughs> Brilliant. No, great, great DJ in there. Well, That's I haven't good, heard it before. Good, isn't it? Yeah. No, it was good. It was very good. It was very good. Um, I was just watching, uh, cable TV. I do a lot of that. And, um, there's an advert I've noticed. It reminded me of, um, the sort of adverts you used to see when I was a kid. It's one of those attempts to kind of educate young people. But doing it in- the, Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's on MTV, but it's one of those things where it's clearly been made by people who are in their mid-forties. Who have never been cool. Who have never been cool. Yeah. Who have been working really hard to get into TV all yeah. their lives. And, uh, and now are trying to appeal to, you know, funky and possibly wayward young people. Yeah. And it's kind of- Nerdy wows. Yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, it's a kind of, uh, stunning model, and two of her stunning model friends. But they're just a couple of average girls, you know, sure. going about their business. And, uh, you know, it says something like, um, it's all shot very funkily, like a kind of, you know, lock, stock and two smoking barrels kind of thing. And, uh, it's a girl, and she's just grooving along with her friends, and it's yeah. kind of like, the, the captions are things like, you know, Isabella's 17. She's cool, she's quite funky, she's got these great friends, and they're sort of hanging out, laughing. And and uh, she just pops into a tattoo parlour. Sure. Why not? Her friends are like, what are you doing? But yeah. she just goes in, you know, she has a tattoo done and it sort of says, she's wild, she's crazy. You know, she lives life as she sees it. She takes every day as it comes. She's not tied down to anything. Da -da 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 -da. She doesn't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. So if you think she's cool, if you think all this is cool, then, then you'll probably won't want to take cigarettes. Exactly. If you want to be cool, yeah, then like don't. Like Isabella or whatever Except the is. thing with that is that people watching that, the, the, the youth watching that will go, well, Bill at my school, he's, he smokes and he's cool. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is the problem with it. Yeah. It's, that it's not that the impulse is wrong, the, the message is fine. It's just this thing, I don't, I can't imagine those things ever working with you, with young people. No. With youths. It's like when you see, when, you know, what was it? What, what it will do is that you, you'll get a lot of 13 and 14 year olds sneaking out and getting a tattoo. <laughs> exactly. So the parents be going, I'd rather she smoke. Exactly. She might give that up yeah, sometime. That's for life. Like, she's got a spider's web on her face now for the rest of her life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's sort of, it's like, you remember, remember that thing when they tried to get pe young people to vote? Do you remember that? Was it Rock the Vote? Was it called oh, Rock the Vote? Was it? was it people like Billy Bragg and, yeah. and people kind of... Yeah. I just, I, I don't know who that appeals to. I don't know, 
you know, <laughs> some youth, uh, he's kind of smashing up a bus shelter, yeah. throwing bricks at old people. Goes, and oh, Billy, 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 what's that Billy Bragg? <laughs> Billy Bragg, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't, I don't believe it ever, I think it was Mick Hucknall was another one. <laughs> <laughs> what's that, Mick? Oh, dear. Well, um, I, I remember the ones where you just, if, if you're, uh, if you're gonna go off with a stranger, your cat went, well, don't yeah. ask mummy first. Yeah. And I remember well, I, I was t t trying to jump in cars left, right and centre, but my cat, <laughs> exactly. when I was like five or six, would go, <laughs> and yeah. i go, good point. Yeah. He, you're right, he could be a nutter. But I seem to remember the, the, the Charlie's, the Charlie Says, it was Charlie Says, wasn't it? Yeah. Charlie Says. Charlie Says! I, I always find them really unnerving. He lived in that really eerie kind of world where you never really well, saw anyone. Yeah, but it, it was yeah. really kind of, it was really eerie. It wasn't very kind of comforting no, they hadn't spent a lot of money on the cartoon, no. had they? No. But it was, I always got the sense with him that he was probably really quite lonely. But I, well, I like the fact is that, and that he had a cat Mummy was so talk. pleased, but well, by the time I came out, they'd gone off and I missed the picnic, but so, Mummy was so pleased that I'd asked her, she gave me an apple. No, I think And she Charlie said, got something he liked, he gets a fish, yeah. right? I was thinking, an apple? No, I seem to remember it being that, um, I get an apple anyway, get me some <laughs> sweets. Yeah. Or a tattoo. I always thought it was a con when your parents got you, um, some clothes you needed for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not falling for that. <laughs> exactly. I'd go, look, I'm getting the clothes anyway. I want battling tops. But the Charlie says, I seem to remember when, when they were, they asked him to go off for the picnic, by yeah. the time he'd asked mum because she was on the phone, yeah. I don't know who she was chatting to in the middle of the day, yeah. um, <laughs> the kids had gone, one and, of her, and I seem to remember One of her clients. <laughs> exactly. I seem to remember, <laughs> I seem to remember that, he, he said, don't worry, it was fine because mum took him and Charlie on a picnic. Not as good. Who'd rather go, uh, with your mates, yeah. or with your mum on mum a picnic? And your cat. And your cat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, I don't oh, think they were mom, friends. I'm, this scotch egg stinks of fish, well I had to bring it for Charlie, don't bring Bring raw fish in the picnic basket. But I think his, those they weren't friends with us. They were just local kids. You go, let's go and let's go and ask that weirdo with the cat <laughs> who wants to come down the park. Let's go and ask the weirdo who thinks the cat can he talk, can talk yeah. and then run away when he goes <laughs> to ask his mum. When he goes off to ask his mum, they're just going. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ask your mum. Yeah. Ask your mum. Yeah. Hello, Aya. All right, we're the local lads, the cool local lads. We smoke. We got tattoos. Um, do you want to come and play with some puppies in the disused mine? Um, sh ask your mum first. <laughs> yeah. Quick, run! Exactly. So, look, he's talking to the cat. Look, he's talking <laughs> to the cat. <laughs> they were just round the corner spying on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were just laughing. There was no picnic. <laughs> Did you ever go on a picnic, Carl? It was, was there places to go in Manchester? Or was it like yeah, Quarry yeah. Land mostly? Uh, the problem with those uh, <laughs> those adverts. Like when I was growing up, they'd sort of give you ideas because remember the Charlie's one, yeah. right? And we were on holiday, <laughs> right? And I met these two lads who were uh, knocking about with like mates and that. <laughs> and that advert came on, and we thought it'd be a good idea to wind his mum up because this advert had just been on saying, you know, kids are going missing in Wales, right? Yeah. So we said, oh, this will be a good laugh. We put the kid in the wardrobe, his mum came back from shopping. We said, oh, he's gone missing. We haven't seen him for hours. That's terrifying. I know. That's How appalling. How old were you? you? About 13. And what was his mum? She must have been, she was she, she was, yeah. Or? Yeah, she was going mad and that's when we thought, oh god, we've, we've gone, will we say anything? Will we pretend we don't know where he is? Open the wardrobe, yeah. he'd suffocated. Yeah. That's yeah. horrible, Carl. I know, but Such it's a just cruel what thing. you do, isn't it? It's just what you do. Well, no, you do. What do you mean? It's just but, what you do. Uh, what was it? Was he in the wardrobe? Was he listening to this? Why didn't he go, mum, it's alright, when he heard her crying? No, she wasn't crying, she was just panicking and like, yeah. screaming a little bit and that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> screaming a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, we tell her when the screaming starts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And then, uh, what's the other thing, like, on the same, like, you know, the, all this was going on when I was growing up, and, um, one time we are on holiday, <laughs> and my mum said, right, if you're going on the beach, it's a big beach, um, but, you know, if you're gonna go out and play there, I need to know where you are. So where are these the bells? Are <laughs> <laughs> like this, where this cowbell, <laughs> don't you know? She gave me a balloon. Good she gave idea. Me a balloon. A balloon, and it just, uh, you know, sort of attached to my arm, so wherever I was playing in the sea and that, you can see the balloon and that. Brilliant. Uh, but then the problem was, what? everyone else thought that's a good idea, cool. and it was just like loads of kids with balloons and that. Oh, they ruined it. So that that didn't work. Yeah, that's a been that sure. been that idea. <laughs> when did, didn't weren't you in a car park once? Oh no, I, it was New Year, and uh, it, we were all gathering up. You know, like in Trafalgar Square at New Year, everyone gathers and they have a big kind of party and stuff. Well, in Bristol, they do something very similar on a <clears throat> smaller scale. And I was there one New Year's with my friends, and uh, I was, I, for some reason I picked up a balloon during the evening, you know, I don't know where I got it from, but I was holding this balloon. And these girls came up to me and I thought, yeah, nice, nice, you know, maybe a little New Year kiss. They came up, they said, uh, hey, are you gonna be here for, uh, for a while? And I said, well, yeah, yeah, I probably will. They said, it's just that we've arranged to meet back at you at midnight. <laughs> 
to do oh, a foot job. What do you mean? Because I was so tall I had a balloon. <laughs> I was towering above everyone else. They said, I said, <laughs> I, said I said, what? They said, we're going to meet back at you at midnight. <laughs> this, this is, they said, don't worry, you can go about your business because we can see you wherever you are. This is where Nelson's column is. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, this is in Bristol. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Right. yeah. And, um, uh, and so, uh, oh, so I'm sort of wandering around and then at midnight they, they, th th these two girls turn up again, and some of their, these lads come and meet them, and, uh, they're sort of laughing and joking, and I'm thinking, oh, they're probably gonna invite me back to a party. I watched them get in a cab. They went off, they had a wild night. Um, uh, but then I did have a balloon, so it was a great new year for me. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a balloon! Oh! Do you um, have a little bit of, uh, bit of Tupac? Uh, yeah, if you want, yeah. yeah. A There's a great lyric in this. It's, it's, uh, picture me rolling, right? Mm. But at the end, he's, uh, he's so saying about, um, uh, look at me now, I've, I'm, you know, drinking Remy and I'm in a Rolls Royce. And he goes, oh yeah, I forgot the DA. Can she see me from here? Can you see me ho? And I think that this is like district attorney turning on the radio and two back. Yeah. Both around going, can that ho see me? She's going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see you. Yeah. It's brilliant. Tupac. I'll tell you what, we should get rolling. <laughs> Rockbusters. No. All right? No. Well, he has done it. He just said that he was worried about it because we said it's the last one. What do you think, Carl? I just don't think we- I mean, can I just say now, Carl, seriously, I'm only responding to what we're getting on the email, which is people do not want Rockbusters. Mm -hmm. yeah. They really- There's one guy here who is- he says, um, it's James Pooley, he says he's preempted Carl by giving my answers to this week's quiz. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what the clue would be, but his answer is no van ear, Nirvana. Yeah, good, no van ear. Yeah, uh, that'd be, that'd be sounds like one. Number two, he's just guessed. He's probably, I don't know again what the clue would be, but the answer is kid creosote. Yeah, that's good. That that's a typical one. That's a, that is brilliant. That's a better game. And the last one is hairy Seacum. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. So, I mean, maybe we should reverse it so people yeah. just, they, <laughs> and, you know. And we have to come up with a, yeah. with a, with a clue for them. You and we, we And we win the prizes. Yeah. Did you even, have you got prizes ready as well? It's all there, but... Oh, I feel sorry for him now. I mean, what the prizes would have been. I'd rather just give them away to the first person to email in, apparently, <laughs> than have to go through the torment of Oh, God! Look at Carl's face! I wish you could... Oh, can't we get this on telly just for Carl's face? Which, what, hey, I'll tell you what we could do, Steve. Uh-huh. You know, like Smiley Miley and that used to take the Radio 1 Roadshow out. Oh man, that would be amazing. Come on, should we take it out? Hello, Bournemouth! Yeah, how many miles have I done? Don't care. <laughs> no, <laughs> should we do this? How many miles have we done? Well, XFM's down the road. Yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> should we take it out the Roadshow so they can see Carl Pilkington? To be fair though, I mean, you're not really keen to leave W1, are you? Well, wouldn't, we wouldn't. Right, so where, where exactly would we take the Roadshow? We'd Into... do it outside. Outside the building? Yeah. Right, okay. And what would we do? It's called a Roadshow because it's in the road, and I imagine, right. isn't it? And we'd give away t-shirts? Throw away, throw in t-shirts, and then we'd have a Any band- We'd have, well, we'd have, um, band playing. What was that band playing tonight? Uh, um, I forget, something Diesel, was it? Yeah. See, instantly forgettable. I mean, that was my <laughs> point, really. <laughs> we could have them on. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. yeah uh, we get a couple of celebrity pals down. Someone from, uh, Big Brother 2. <laughs> that would be ideal. Well, uh, Josh, that other, the other little gay fella. <laughs> yeah. He'd come on, just wave. Yeah. I'm beginning to like the idea. Yeah? Be brilliant, yeah. So we'll have Josh, something Diesel, we're playing the Bull and Gates now, whatever <laughs> exactly, it is. Yeah. Right, we'll I'll throw out some t-shirts. Yeah. And then, uh, Carl, Carl will do a live Rockbusters. Yeah? Well, I don't know, do you want it? Um, I, th I just think that ruins it slightly. It would just bring the whole afternoon down, Rick, I think. We'd get it sponsored by someone. Yeah? Um, no? Well, I'm just trying to no, sure, inject yeah. a bit of- Read the prices, what they would have done. There's a, there's a PlayStation game here. Uh, oh. I guess it's maybe not been released yet. It's a little demo of that. Uh, what's this? The American Song Poem Anthology. I don't exactly know what that is again, but lots of songs on there and a couple of compilations, arbitrary compilations, the Club Anthems compilation, the best summer holiday album ever. Wow. Well, oh, there you've, it is again. You've certainly sold it to me, Steve. The best air guitar album again. Brilliant. And an old edition of Only Fools and Horses. So, so, you really haven't put the effort into the prizes, Carl. So, if that's the prizes, if that's the whole point of the competition, and they're the best prizes you could conjure up. In God's name, how bad are the clues this week? That's why he doesn't want you to do it, Carl. Oh, we won't, we won't bother. We get it. Doesn't matter. Good. Excellent. Well, that's resolved. Brilliant. That's excellent. So um, what we have got, though, is Educating Ricky, haven't we? Well, another one of my little things. Oh, it's brilliant, then. So how long's this gonna last before you wanna get ditched this? Well, we'll see. A couple of weeks. <laughs> Not like that, Carl. It's all one. It's all we are- it's one love, man. We're on the same team, man. Yeah, we're just one voice, man. One true voice. Like those- like those lads. Yeah. 
They could play. Right, well, the, the educating record. <laughs> they right? could play. Well, that, uh, why don't we play a record and come back with educating The record? wind, Cat Stevens. We, need to, we need to get the uh, jingle song. queued up as well. Yeah, I'll get the jingle queued up. No, yeah. I, I haven't got Neil Young lined up yet. No, not Neil Young, Cat Stevens. I, I gave it to I, you. I know, I know, we're not playing that yet. Can we just play well, a record? No, well, I told you. Well, I told you to. See, what, what, is, what, what, so why aren't you playing the record I told you to play? Because we've just had something chilled, right, from Tupac. Let's lift it up a bit now with a bit little bit of blur. Right? Come on, play it. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just have. <laughs> Crazy beat bro on XFM 104.9. Right, we're gonna uh, do Educating Ricky instead of Rockbusters. Incidentally, on the subject of Rockbusters, we just had an email from Phil. He says, I could do with this week's rather shoddy array of prizes as I'm doing a car boot sale tomorrow <laughs> and need a bit more tat to fill the table. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll send, well, probably send it we, to might, him. we might as well do it anyway. Yeah. But educating Ricky, uh, it was a feature. Well, actually, um, about a year ago, I started a feature called Educating Carl because we found out he had one E at O level at history, uh, and uh, I'd educate him on things like Rasputin, um, things that I thought he'd be interested in. You know, Winston Churchill, some of the greats, some scientific facts. And uh, then I said, "It's your turn," and he started telling me about people born without legs, uh, some people have got a funny eye, there's a woman whose tongue's longer than her arm, and, uh, really, you know, turning the screw on education. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know what he's got for me today. Maybe a dog born a cat. <laughs> Let's have a look. We've done that one, we've done that. <laughs> and is there, is there, cause some, often we should point out there's sometimes a crossover between Educating Ricky and F Cheeky Freak of the Week. Yeah. Just in terms of subject matter. Yeah, so, uh, uh, we've done Cheeky Freak of the Weeks, we've done all the freaks. What have we done with the freak of the week? There's a, uh, well, there was a dog. There was a woman that had the back legs of a dog. There was, last week, there was, what was last week? It was the, um, it was the, it was the girl who was born with four eyes, two mouths and three legs. Sure. You weren't that impressed, so I thought, if we've got to that and it's not impressing you. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's we are a tough audience, so Let's admit. let's move on. Um, is there yeah. a jingle for, uh, Educating Ricky? Educating Ricky, oh, um, oh God. Oh, um, oh, you've told me, educating Ricky. Oh. Very similar to some of the other jingles I've done. Yeah. Well, they're made by the same people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, okay, well, you uh, for? it's just, I mean, educating Ricky is just stuff that I learn in the week and I think that's interesting. I keep it up here and then I share it with you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, uh, some interesting stuff. Uh, one of them, right? You know, mm. uh, Mount Everest. <laughs> Go on. I need, uh, I need more. <laughs> right, well, there's a problem. Yeah. Because people are, are leaving rubbish up there and that. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, people, whoever owns it is saying, oh, I'm gonna say, <laughs> Whoever owns it! <laughs> is saying, forget this. They're leaving a mess and all that. But do you know why it's called Mount Sorry, Everest? Sorry, what was that? That's one, is it? That's one. There's rubbish on Mount Everest. No, How I'm many not. people go up there? I know are we talking about people dumping old tellies who's, and washing machines? Who's, who's it's fed it's up? The Yeti? What, I mean, what are you talking about? No, I, I mean, that, that isn't what I'm educating you. I'm just telling- this is part of the story, I'm just telling you. It's just a bit of context for you. That they li they're leaving loads of rubbish up there. Well, they're not leaving loads of rubbish up there, are they? No, they are. They're not like right prams ones. and washing machines and seagulls flying everywhere. I don't know. Anyway. Don't know. But anyway, do you know why it's called that? you know why it's called Mount Everest? Why well, it's called Mount Everest? I know the mount bit. It's because <laughs> it's a large mount, and if you climb it, by the time you get to the top, you need to have a rest. And that is that isn't the educating bit. I'm just telling. Well, it's you. not true. Well, we'll we'll leave that. Well, right? no, Carl. In the name of everything holy, do you think that anyone named it? Because you have to have a rest when you've climbed it. Well, we'll see. We'll see what people say on email. But well, that, it's definitely not. But anyway, that that's one thing that, that I kind of thought, that's interesting. I'll remember that. I'll teach Ricky that so you've learnt that. <laughs> right, now, are you familiar with, uh, the- this thing that they can do if you're dead, right? <laughs> no, no, not if you're dead. It's <laughs> like if you're ill and you know you're gonna die, yeah. right? I don't know what this is any anymore. Extraordinary. Have a rest. Extraordinary. Himalayas. Him Himalaya. <laughs> what, what, what? Listen, this is an interesting fact, come on. If, so if you're ill but you know you're gonna die? Yeah, you can have this thing done in Detroit where you get put in a fridge. Right. And, uh, if they work out, you know, what's wrong with you in 20 years time, 
they go, right, that fella is in the fridge, he, he had that, we can sort it, let's get him out. And, uh, they sort you out. That's... Yeah. Uh, is this the first time you've come across this idea? Yeah, I read it the other day, I didn't, I didn't know You've never it. heard of this before? It's no, quite, it's quite quite genetically quite preserved. It's good, isn't it? They take, they, they take, they make, they put you at sort of like, sub-zero temperatures so they stop all cellular activity. So does, do you, do you stop aging at that point? Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you, it's suspended animation. So, well what's the, what's the law on it, right? Cause say if I, say if I add something, right? Yeah. And, uh, I said, oh, put me in a fridge and, and when, when you've got the cure and that, wheel me out and sort me out. Say if they did that. Yeah. And it was like, 40 years. Yeah. And in 40 years time they, they, they get a cure for me. Yeah. Would, would I have to stay with Suzanne? Because <laughs> she'd be 70. <laughs> Do you mean what are the rules? You can, should you be allowed to <laughs> date a younger woman? Well it's, it's not fair is it? On it's her. like good no, news, good no. news, you sort you out, but is, I don't is think she'd mind, I reckon she'd, she'd, she'd have the best 40 years of her life. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, they're never gonna find a cure for what ails you. <laughs> that is genius! That is brilliant! You come out, you're cured, and you go, oh no. I love the fact that's what he'd be lying there. If, <laughs> if you could think while he was in that state, you'd be thinking, oh god. She's losing her looks. Yeah. Just, oh dear. But, but everything else as well, like, me, me job wouldn't, wouldn't be here. No. No. Um. Although the figures would have gone up. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, flat's probably gone or knocked down or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Most of my family would be dead. Yep. So what's the point? What, 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 how do you know about it? Who's done it? Because, well, famously Walt Disney, apparently. I mean, Walt Disney actually did die, but had his body preserved so that should they one day be able to bring back people <laughs> from, from the, the dead, dead. <laughs> they need, they need Walt yeah, Disney. Think, hang on, who do yeah, we, who but, do we but, have? But with him, nothing is gonna change, because when he comes out, Mickey Mouse will still Look the same. Sure. And plug and all that. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Play record! I don't, I don't know where your mind is! Play record! It's brilliant, you just say words! It's the avarice! <laughs> <laughs>Carl's a little bit fed up today, actually whinging, I mean properly whinging, fed up, reckons he's tired, reckons he's overworked here, but, do you know what I mean Carl, everyone gets tired, everyone gets tired, everyone does the same sort of hours to you, what do you do, sort of nine till six, seven? Uh, about nine till half seven, eight. Well no, cause I've, a couple of times this week I've sort of met you for a drink about six, so, it's funny isn't it, that's yeah, weird. I've, some of the times I've come back after it. Just for another 40 minutes or something whilst no one's around, try and get stuff done without phones going, without emails coming in. Yeah, we've got to do it. Can I tell you what I think's a disappointment? You're in the department. You've got to do it. I just think it's a disappointment that Carl hasn't been able to put that aside and rise to the occasion. He's only got to do this show once a week. It's I know. Hours. It's I mean, no one I, we're tired. We've, 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 we've got, got a uh, You've got one job. We've got about six. And we're still doing it. Do you know what I mean? We still do it. We still well, come Well, you're a here. professional, Rick. I mean, that's why you've won multiple awards, is because you're willing to get up there. Even if you're feeling a little bit under the weather, even if you hurt yourself, you've got an injury of some kind, yeah. get up there, you're doing it. You're, yeah. you're entertaining, you're providing yeah. a service. Yeah. So... I mean, it's a disappointment. Yeah, but I've pressed all the right buttons at the right time. <laughs> Indeed. Right? That's what I get paid for, yeah. 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 Done that, the adverts have gone out. Sure. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. made you cups of tea. It's the negativity which is a problem, it's the vibe, you're bringing, bringing the us room down. Room. Bringing us down. And, the, and therefore down. the listeners. Therefore the listeners. Bringing us down. If you don't like London, you know what to do. Mm. Well, well, I'm trying. I'm trying to get out of here, aren't I? Try, we just try bought a new out. flat. That's not. That's, that's not doesn't the best way. Buy a flat in Manchester. Live there. <laughs> doesn't matter. I can always yes. rent it out and make a little bit of money. Why don't you sell the flat in London and buy um, a street in Manchester? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Pilkington Avenue. Really, you can literally have <laughs> the Lord, yeah. the king of that street. <laughs> <laughs> people could, and people could come to you like Solomon with their problems. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's come up from London. He, he's got London ways. Now, so, interestingly, do, have you heard, you, do you remember the famous King Solomon story? That, uh, there are two women, they're arguing both arguing over. over whose baby it is. And they present this to them, they say, this is, this is my baby, and the other one goes, no, this is my baby. So one, he knows one of them's lying, but he doesn't know which one. And so, 
Uh, and so what does he do? How does he, how does King Solomon solve that? How does he figure out whose baby it is? How, what? For instance, what both, would you they're do? both white fellas, yeah? Both what? White, white fellas. So one's women, two women. Right. It's a, two white well, women. They, to me, probably, they probably weren't, you know, completely white. <laughs> Yeah, well, but, whatever. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're of the same ethnicity. No, but I'm just working out, working out. Right, all right, then. So, so, yeah. All right. And don't think about what King Solomon would necessarily yeah, do. Yeah, it wasn't that, it wasn't, it wasn't that easy. No, it's not, there's not one tall, skinny white one with big ears and so is the baby, the other one's a little short Chinese bloke. <laughs> yeah. It's two women for a start. Yeah. Two women, okay. The baby to look at could be either, he doesn't know which, but he knows one of them's lying, obviously. And, and is the one lying saying it's hers or saying it's not hers? Right, okay, uh, this isn't worth it, Steve. I'm gonna tell you what he said, and you tell me if you think it was good or not. He says, well, then what we do is, as King, he said, what we do is, I'll take a sword, I'll cut the baby into two, and you can have half each. And one of the women says, no, don't do that. And one of them says, yeah, that's fair. Right. Do you see? Uh, so which one was it? Please. Sorry? Please. What? Well, no, my guess is the one that didn't want it done probably was the mother of the child. The one that didn't mind having the baby cut in half probably wasn't a mother of the child. Why don't you think, you bald little mank twat, play a record? Well, I'm just, uh, oh, right. Although, it's not a very good solution. No. I, that, that doesn't have the name the, the woman who was lying could have come up with something better than, yeah, cut it in half. <laughs> what yeah. you should have done is, yeah, I'll give it to the other one as well. Yeah. Jaded from Aerosmith on XFM 104.9. Just trying to pet things See, up. See, Steiner, you're up. You're yeah. up there. I mean, we've got lots of work to do. We're filming too, and we've got loads of things, admin, DVDs, everything like that. We come in here. This is poxy. This is, this is, this is not a drop in the ocean, the sort of work and money we earn. <laughs> right, really? If we do this to keep charitable status. Because, and yet you, you know, Carl, come on. What's the matter with you? Are we doing Rockbusters? I'll tell you what, I'll tell, no, come on Rick, I'll tell you what, because it's your special day and I want yeah. you to have a great time today. Yeah. We're gonna do Rockbusters if just you. If you cheer up, if you cheer up, miserable, he just got ratty then, go, no, don't push it on me head, don't put it on me head. Right, what were you trying to put on me head? I was trying to put a pear on your head to knock it off with a ball, like William Tao, but it was, your, because your head is so round and the pear was round, I tried to flatten it a little bit and I didn't know it was a juicy pear. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought it'd be like a, just to crush it a little bit, and then he went mental because he had juice rubbing, running down his face. Oh. Why is it my fault? The pears are faulty for pear. <laughs> exactly. Get proper fruit in here. It worked with the apple. That was fine. And then he gets ratty with me. Okay, let's not waste any time with Rockbusters. Can we really, let's whip through just it? Whip no through it. Just do the clues, so quickly. Quick, go, Rockbusters. Right, go. go. Right, the first clue. Yeah, was... hurry up, faster. All the police cars are on fire. All the police cars are on fire. What's the uh, initials? BS. BS. All the police cars are on fire. Good. What's the next one? The director of 28 Days Later is shouting about sleeping outside. Yeah, okay. What's the, uh, the initials for that? DB. Right, okay. Okay, yeah. Right, go on then. He wants to be a sailor. Why is that? Yeah, well, um, what's the initials there? B. Brilliant. Okay. Give them again quickly, because I didn't quite catch the second one, so but go from the top. <laughs> All the police cars are on fire. Yeah, that's B BS. BS. Yeah. The director of 28 Days Later is shouting about sleeping outside. Yeah, okay. DB. Yeah. Right? He wants to be a sailor. Why is that? Yeah. B. B. Okay, then brilliant. Okay, now Carl, you gonna cheer up now? Yeah. Email only, Ricky J Gervais at virgin.co.net. <laughs> Radio yeah. 1 Roadshow. <laughs> Smiley Miley. <laughs> Smiley mileage mileage game. If anyone remembers that, I mean, here's a man, right, who, who, whose job, Smiley Miley was not a DJ, let's me forget. Smiley Miley was the guy that organised the vans that carried the equipment to and from the road shows. Because he was such a crazy personality. Because he smiled a little bit, <laughs> exactly. he got recognition, Carl. Longevity, lots of money, and lives where he wants to live. The town that he wants to live in. Why don't you just enjoy the town that you've chosen to live in, because it's so good? London. Where, what towns have you you been to? Have you have you travelled at all? I've been about a bit. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then, what towns did you like? Okay. Forget Manchester. We've that's safe. You like Manchester? Well, I'll do the I big three: shouting. London, New York, Paris. Okay. You don't like London, even though you live here. Got flats here. Good. Excellent. That makes sense. Have you been to New York? Yeah. What do you think? It's, my, it's an amazing city. I like isn't it? it. It's 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 just noisy. It's yeah. smelly. Right. It's the city that never sleeps. Oh. Um. I'm not surprised with all the all the racket and that. 
<laughs> Paris. The city uh, of love. The most romantic city in the world. Not really. I remember seeing an old woman in McDonald's in there and it put, it put me off. That's where, where that thing happened, where the what? old woman was. What did you say? Tell us. We talked about it before, the old woman in McDonald's. Yeah, what she happened? Was, she was sat in the corner there with her legs open, no knickers on, right? <laughs> Oh God! Did well, that's, that put, that's Paris. Did, did that put you off your cheeseburger? Next city, where where next? Have you been to? Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, the most beautiful city, Venice. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, it's good. No, why? Because <laughs> because they, they sell it. They sell it to you as if it is a romantic city. Where did you see it? Sold? No, I saw I saw it on uh, when I was growing up. Right, remember three two one with Ted Rogers? <laughs> yeah, of course. Right, he used to be one been. of the star prizes on there. Right, and they'd say, "Let's show you the video. Let's see what you're going to. Let's see where you're going to be loving yeah. it for a couple of weeks." And he'd show you this scene yeah. of like the gondolas, yeah, and all the all, all the city lit up at night, yeah, like yeah. a man and woman sat on a boat, loving yeah. it and stuff. Yeah, I went there, bin bags everywhere. <laughs> Play a record. Oh, it's an ass. Play a record. It's London. That flooded. is Wish You Were Here with Carl Pilkington. All right. <laughs> it's London flooded. <laughs> Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Stop. On XFM. Carl's back. He's cheering up a little bit. Because, uh, he's, he, I think he's vented his spleen a little bit on, um, cities around the world that aren't as good as Manchester. So, uh, is there any of your family left in Manchester? Because they all moved away, didn't they? You came here. Your dad's moved to Wales, for Christ's sake. Well, your family are all around the- brother joined the army to get anywhere. Just take me anywhere. I don't know where he is. His sister's moved away, so no Ireland. one- Ireland. Yeah. yeah. there oh, you go, no. you see? So, yeah. that's just one family. <laughs> That's just- that's- that's one family who love Manchester! <laughs> exactly. Alright? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, Steve. Go on. I did find out in the week. Yeah. Uh, world record, mm. right? Uh, person with the longest trump. With the longest what? Wind. Fart. Right. Right? <laughs> two minutes forty-two is the world record. Okay. Right? Well, I'm immediately thinking about a relative of yours, who I'm sure did longer than that. Who still lives in Manchester. Auntie Nora. Now, Auntie Nora did it for five minutes, wasn't it? Star fight for five minutes. But, unfortunately, she was the only person in the room. Where, whereas, I think, which one's alive? Ross or Norris McWhorter? Uh, I don't know, actually. He has to be there. Yeah, I think he actually, actually has to he'd be He'd have to be there. Would you want to be there? <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd have sort of equipment, looking at his watch, going, finish, he goes, yeah, he goes, well, that was... Four minutes, Did she go from seconds. like a size ten to a size six? <laughs> she just, Did she like, show some old dresses? Like, like, a, like, like a hovercraft. Exactly. In a, a big dress. Yeah, just yeah. slightly off. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it has to be invigilated. But again, you know, how was the world- Guinness Book of World Records one invigilated? I mean, who- who was supervising that? Who he said- he said, him? I can fart for two minutes. They went, well, we've got to see this. Went round. And, uh, he just probably let it rip. It's probably circular breathing. He's probably sort of sucking in air and swallowing it as he's going. And it's a continuous one, isn't it? It's not like- Yeah. yeah. I mean, I said, you know, that's- that's how Nora's happened, me auntie Nora. <laughs> she had a little bit of wind, it went on for like two and a half minutes. Sure. That's- that's when she called me ma'am. <laughs> as it was still going on. And said, uh, there's something not right here. And, I'm leaking. Uh, she- she said, oh, can you send, uh, your dad round? You know, my dad. Yeah. Sent to me, ma'am. With a cork. And, uh, <laughs> With a lighter. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think this would be the best one I ever. wanna show the kids something. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'll be there in a bit, get the windows open. <laughs> <laughs> but what uh, it was down to, cause I was talking to my mum and dad about it. Is she the one with the split it. tennis ball? Yeah. Can we not talk about that again? I was- I was talking to my mum and dad about it, saying, you know, why- why do you think it happened and that. And it's because she- she never chucks food away, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And she'll sort of mash it all up. Mm -hmm. And she's got all these ice cream tubs in the fridge that are just full Cabbage of like water. old mashed up food. Really? And she prepares everything. Right? She doesn't work, she's retired now, she's got <laughs> nothing to do all day, but everything's got to be ready Still for her. Still calls in sick. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Everything's got to be done. Even though, it, if you're going round to her house and you're going there for tea, it's like, what time are you coming? And it's like, well, I don't know, maybe five, maybe six. Yeah, yeah you're well, late. Because you're late when you have to, to meet know. us at five or six. Do you know what I mean? That's what. But so, so, when you say she mashes up food, she literally takes the remnants of a dinner. Could be sort of some anything, and just smashes it all up into a 
Yeah. And then what does she do with it? He, Put it in the fridge and she's got it in the fridge, it's like January, February, March, she's got all these ice cream boxes that are just full of- But she doesn't- she reheats it and eats oh, it. Oh, then, then she, yeah, puts I it in the pan. I thought she was just keeping it as a no, souvenir no, no, no. of each meal she'd have. No, put it in a pan, warm it up. Oh, that's And that's, that's what it is, it's just- A lot of vegetation, is it? Yeah. Why has it only happened once or does she save it up once a year, just let it go? I, I don't know, I don't know. But she is mad, she's- Yeah, she sounds potty. She, she doesn't answer the phone anymore in case she's a burglar. Checking if she's in. <laughs> it's like, we'll answer it and then they'll know you are in and they won't come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mental. Well, they, Mental. Ca they can't be sure then, can they? What do you mean? Well, if there's no, okay, well, maybe it's someone just, they are in, but they're hiding. Whereas if Auntie Nora goes, it's Auntie Nora, we can nick, she'll be farting. <laughs> we can sneak in when she does a loud one. Because <laughs> she'll be, we'll be aware of the telly, what's, what's stopping it? It's got a valance around it, it's got, it's got caught on the cat. <laughs> so, have we got a recap on Rockbusters? No, a recap? just do, has anyone got the right answers? Uh, I've, Has so anyone far. got the right answers? Let me just check here. Uh, here's one from uh, from someone who just says uh, he's given an answer. Uh, answer to number one, I. Number two, don't. Number three, care. Right. Okay. Is he close? Has anyone got three answers? I can't find one with three answers. So again, you've done something wrong, Carl. No. Duh, 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 no. This isn't radio. This isn't radio. Play a record. There you go, someone's got it. Give it to them. Fine, okay, give us the clues again, we'll give the answer straight yeah. away. No funny in the rain. Yeah, right. it's really pointless. Number one, all, yeah. the, all the police cars are on fire. BS. BS. Yeah, what was that? I can think of something. Go on. Blazing Squad. Brilliant. Okay. Right. Uh, the director of 28 Days Later is shouting about sleeping outside. Yeah. That's Dan Yell Bedding Field. Right? <laughs> Dan Yell, Dan Yell Bedding never... Field. Right, we're never letting him do this again. I told you I washed my hands of it. I know, but Why I just thought- Why do you let him? Why do you- Because just... he was grumpy. But this is what happens, look what's happened. Danielle Bedingfield, that's what's- that's the- that's- that's what happened. The director of- so- so Danny Boy, so Dan, right, he, all that for Dan, but shouting about being- Dan Yell Bedingfield, right? What's the last one? He wants to be a sailor, why is that? Yeah. Beyonce. What does that mean? Be on sea. He wants be to be on, on the sea. Play record. You're what? never doing it again. You've I just can't... signed your death warrant. What have we done? You're never doing Rockbusters again. And if Monkey News is about that, we'd ban that as well. Mm. We've and we're serious it. this time. So Joe and Catford, <laughs> stuff off to you. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe what <laughs> we've done. Stuff doing the shout out. Here you won. Well done on that. What have we done, Rick? What have we done? A little sailor fella, he wants to, you know, join the navy. Why? B on C. B on C. Knowles. Is his surname? <laughs> yeah. Midshipman Knowles. Now, Carl, we're going to do another edition, I think, of Wish You Were Here because that really cheered you up, didn't it? Tom. Um, where else you been? Where else you been? Have you been? Um, you've been around Europe, haven't you? You've been to any hot country? You've been to Greece. Greece. Uh, uh, Turkey. Done Turkey, yeah. Yeah. Been to Turkey. Uh, little fellas. Little midgets working in the canteen in the hotel I was in. <laughs> okay. Hassling uh, Suzanne as well. <laughs> okay. Have you, uh, have you been to, uh, have been to Scotland? Uh, once. For the, uh, for the Edinburgh Festival. Go on. Um, that's where I looked out in my hotel room, <laughs> saw a traffic warden putting a, a ticket on some bin bags. Brilliant. Because they'd gone into the road. So that's, uh, that's, that's Turkey, Scotland. Uh, what about places, uh, here, has he been to- have you been to the West Country, where we- where Have you been to my neck of the woods, Bristol? Uh, I haven't been around, what else is around there? Bath? Been to Bath, yeah. Yeah, what do you make of it? Uh, once you've been, well, they don't need to go again, cause it's sort of old and they don't- they don't change anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> That'd so be the Roman spa yeah, he's yeah. talking about, like, I think. Yeah. What about, um, uh, Brighton? Uh, not uh, gay people. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, next week on Wish You Were Here, uh, we'll go to some other places where there are gay people. Fascinating. And Brilliant. An another extraordinary insight there. Uh, Carl, could we have some monkey news? Well, just before we do monkey news, right, can I do a little, uh, psychological test on you? On me? Yeah. Okay. It's brilliant, this. Someone emailed it in. Brilliant. Right. Little story with mm. a question at the end. Okay. Right? Right. Oh, this listen, is gonna be listen. so annoying. No, 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 it's not, honestly. It's, well, it's, it is, because you're gonna think it's science and it's gonna be trite. Alright, well. Go on. Right, little, little story first, right, there's this funeral, 
Right. And this girl was at a funeral. Same funeral? Yeah. Right. It, it was a mother's funeral. Oh, yeah. Right. She met this fella who she didn't know, right? But she thought this fella who she met was amazing. She didn't know him, right? But she thought he was brilliant, right? Like a dream fella. Right. And she fell in love with him, right? But never asked for his, his number, his phone number. Right. Right? And she couldn't find him. Now, a few days later, the girl killed her own sister. Right? Yes. Question is, why did she do that? Okay, well it's one of those stupid things then, isn't it? <sighs> so it's not logic, it's, it's, it's what am I thinking? No, no it's not, so it's, it's a proper, so it's, it's a so proper it's mental logic. test. It's a it's proper a, mental test. A mental test? It does, it is a bit mental. So, so you understand the story, uh, yeah? I uh, kind of, let me just get it right. So there's a funeral, a girl goes to the funeral of her mother. Yeah. Um, she, she meets the guy, or she... She, she meets, meets she the guy at the funeral. She, she meets, meets the person. He looks all right. I fancy a bit of that. Right. right. Has a chat with him. Yeah. But doesn't get his name, doesn't get a phone number or anything. So, so, so to cut a long story short, the things are asked, right, so, so the reason she kills her own sister, is this something to do with finding out something about the man she met? Well, I, just answer the thing. Just, why do you, why do you- Oh, okay then. Um, I'll answer it then. Um, she went mental. She, he was a spy called Derek. What do you mean, just answer it? Anyway, I'm testing Steve. Right, well she killed her own sister because, uh, her sister, um, had stolen some money from her. And was sleeping with her husband. Is that, is that it? Well, well as, well, I don't know, Carl, I don't know. It's an answer, it's an answer. answer. I don't what's, know. What's, what's the answer on the paper? <laughs> <sighs> so, well, come on, what come is- Come on! Well, the, the answer is- No, an answer is- <laughs> That she was hoping that the guy would appear at the funeral again. He'd, he'd go to the <laughs> funeral. Right, that's not a proper psychological test. It is, it's, it's one of those it. stupid little shitty things. It it's it like is. a man goes into a field and dies, why? His parachute didn't open, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised it's... you'd learn anything. Oh, Honestly, I God. love that. Romeo and anything. Juliet. Oh, Juliet's a fish. He said, she was hoping that the guy would appear again at the funeral. If you answered this correctly, you think like a psychopath. This was a test by a famous fella, right? Who used it on killers, and most of the killers got the answer right. Did you also well, think that? But, was that the answer you gave but, when you no, first read it? No, I didn't know, I didn't know. But I, I wondered what you would've got. Good, yeah, so that's proof that I'm not a psychopath. Yeah, but that, that's the point, but it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a psychological test for looking at something very, very specific. What's up with that? Well, what, what was the best that could happen? That he'd got it right so he is a psychopath? What annoys me is you're not happy with that, that, uh, that test, but before you wasted three minutes trying to balance a pair on my head. <laughs> What, what were you getting out of that? Let's play a song and have some money. Oh. Oh. Joe Jackson, is she really going out with him on XFM? Right, it's the time that most people I imagine have been waiting for. Monkey news. Play the jingle. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right. Um, Come on. <laughs> Come on. It should be ready, Carl. Uh, it's amazing, isn't it? It's like, uh, Nicholas Witchell. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, ooh, the bomb. No, what, no, that's not the first. Um, Come on! No, it's always difficult, isn't it, to, to sort of find something that's good each week, right? Last week, we did the chimp. It is for us, yeah. Did, it, we had the chimps who were running a health spa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, we've covered the one who, who nicked a car to go on to Spain. Yep. To wow. sort his future out. All, all shite. Uh, the hairdresser, I think he's, you know, we've done that one, the little monkey hairdresser. This week we're looking at monkeys, um, that they're using, do you know like monkeys, they, 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 they know, they know how like- I've lost the will to live, Steve. Oh, well, I don't want to do it. <laughs> but, like, but, well, come on, just, come on. What are monkeys good at? What are monkeys good at? Yeah. Um, well, running small businesses, <laughs> cutting people's hair, uh, and they're driving very good cars. Yeah, yeah, they love Spain. Oh, and foiling bank robberies. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're great. Well, something else they're good at, right, is like weighing up the situation. <laughs> ah! Oh, God! If you stick them in a, in like a, a field with loads of, like, obstacles on it, right, they're good at sort of, yeah, I can get over that, I know how to climb over that, I'll swing from there to there, that sort of thing, right? Okay. 
So the people in charge of somewhere have thought- oh, Somewhere! Come on. I've thought we can use that, we can use that skill, right? What? And what- what- the, what they've done is they've got a lo load of, uh, little monkeys, right? They've given an IQ test. Yeah. And the ones that score above 80, right? Get to produce this show next week. <laughs> Join the army. <laughs> <laughs> right. How do they join the army and what do they do? They just, um, what they do is they, they set little obstacle courses up for them. They do that. They do a cross country run. They do, um, the a cross IQ country test. run? Yeah. Okay. And then once they've done all that, they make them a little uniform, made to measure little uniform. Long, yeah. Slightly yeah. longer arms, shorter legs than usual, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Basically, then they taught how to use a gun and that sort of thing. Yeah, of course they are. Uh, You're talking rubbish again. This this came this came through literally, you know, pretty late late on. So so you've not had a chance to corroborate all the facts as usual. Just have a look. <sighs> right, uh, it's the inter the bit I'm looking for is well, a why they're doing it, why are they doing it? Yeah. Why do we need monkeys in the army? And secondly, why are we giving them guns? I'll yeah. just check to see if any of that. I don't know fact we only let gays in recently. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Um, just have a look. I can't read it, I, that's too much pressure. But I'm it's sure rubbish. Have, just have a, just have a, but have it's a rubbish. Eye. They don't get, it's, again, it's the way that there are things, that, that you, there are, there are animal cores, right? There are horses, there are dolphins, sea lions, uh, you know, there are lots and lots of animals in the army, but they don't have to pass <laughs> an obstacle test as such, and they're not taught to fire guns. We'll You've straight away assumed that they're gonna be, there's gonna be uh, loads of squads of men and then just one little monkey in the middle. <laughs> like, you know, he did, he came second on the test. He's in. <laughs> He's in, boys. What do you think, Steve? You've, you've read it? Well, as ever, Carl, this is an arbitrary email sent by one of our listeners. You know what Ricky and I think of them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so we're not really basing this on hard evidence. We're basing it on the ramblings of one of our listeners. Rubbish. Once again, lazy, rubbish, uncorroborated, nonsense, the stupid test that you got wrong. Rick, that, that sounds like monkey news to me. 